In this video, I will tell you the number one strategy to use when interviewing a patient with an orthopedic related complaint and the best way to get an ortho related history of present illness, HPI. And I'm going to show you how to do it the right way. Well, at least the best way that I know how to do it. Then I'll explain how you can easily use these straightforward strategies to grow your MP clinical confidence and practice. And make sure that you stick around to the end because I will also share with you the four effective ways to get more comfortable while doing patient interviews, which will get you the patient information that you need. Also, I will share with you how to access the free must have ortho guide for nurse practitioners. Hello everyone, Jessica here from MP Insiders, where I help you expand your nurse practitioner clinical knowledge and fast track your career growth and practice all while making it enjoyable. You've come to the right place. If you're new here, make sure that you click that subscribe button and all the links that I mentioned in this video, you're going to be able to find them in the description box below. So let's jump into it. So a good clinical history will help you craft your differential and get you the correct diagnoses faster. Let me repeat that again. It's going to help you get the correct diagnoses faster. So listen to your patients. You want to make sure to know what it is that the patient's chief complaint is and target your questions accordingly. But number one, one strategy I use when interviewing a patient with an orthopedic related complaint is to make sure that my questions are simple and they're easy to answer. Unless your patient is also a healthcare provider, usually they will not know how to answer things like, was your active range of motion? Was your passive range of motion? Or are you able to bear weight? Or do you have a varus or valgus deformity? Avoiding using this type of clinical terminology and using words that your patients already know and they're comfortable with will make it easier for you to get the good history that you need to then help them to get to a correct plan and diagnosis. It would also make it easy for your patients to give you the correct information to make the proper diagnosis and to do what is in their best interest. So now that we got that out of the way, let's talk about the best way to get an ortho-related history of present illness or what we also know as HPI. And the answer to that is to develop your framework or system. Okay, let me explain. To avoid missing anything from your HPI, you really want to try to have a systematic approach when asking your patient questions. You don't want to be all over the place. In my case, I always like to do things the same way so that I make sure that I do not miss anything. This has definitely worked for me and it makes my clinical life easier and also that of my patients. I promise you that this has worked tremendously. So for ortho-related diagnoses, the questions that you want to make sure that you ask your patients are onset, when did the pain begin, location. So tell your patient, point with your finger and tell me where it is that it hurts the most. Duration, how long have you had the pain for? characteristics, right? Is the pain dull? Is it sharp? Does the pain travel? Aggravating factors. What makes it worse? Walking, sitting, standing, lifting, pushing. What makes it bad? Relieving factors. What makes it better? You can use the same questions as in the aggravating factors to then shift it and ask them what is it that improves their pain or what have they tried? The next thing is treatment. What have you done? What have you tried that has helped you? Or what have you tried that no longer helps you? So have you tried NSAIDs, heat, cold? And of course, have these things worked? Severity. Do not forget to ask this one. How much does it hurt? You can use the very well known scale, pain scale, zero to 10 scale, right? But keep in mind that Pain is very subjective and is influenced by a patient's background and tolerance of pain. So this might not always get you the information that you need. So I don't know if you just realized it, but we just use the old cards framework. This is a very easy and quick framework and system that you can actively apply starting now in your daily clinical practice and bring to mind the pertinent things that you do not want to miss from your HPI. So let's recap. O for onset, L for location, D for duration, C for characteristics, 
A for aggravating factors, R for relieving factors, T for treatment, and S for severity. Old cards. Remember that. Also, do not forget to inspect and visualize the joint that hurts when your patients have any orthopedic complaints. You don't want to miss scars or swelling or redness or anything like that. For example, if it's a lower extremity problem, I always watch my patients walk and notice how they walk. I also look at their skin. I also pay attention to the way that they walk. Do they have an ontologic or trendelenburg gait? That is very important. Are they limping? Which side are they favoring? So there is a lot to gain from just watching and observing how your patients walk. Hint, hint. So now I will share with you the four ways to get you more comfortable when doing ortho-related patient interviews and to get the clinical information in an effective way that is comfortable for you and also for your patient. So I want you to remember these two things. Number one, your patient has the answers that you need. I'm going to repeat it again. Your patient has the answers that you need. And number two, you are in charge of putting all this information together and reaching the correct diagnoses. So keep pondering that. Your patient has the answers that you need and you have to put it all together so that you can get the correct diagnosis and help them. So let's begin. Always begin any patient interaction by introducing yourself to the patient. I know, I know, it sounds very simple, but believe it or not, we often miss that simple approach the introduction and this is so critical and this has to happen before you start asking away all the questions your old cards everything that you have in your mind unfortunately we go so fast in clinical practice that we may skip this step but it's simple it's critical and it's a never miss number two try to sit at eye level with your patient you want to make sure that your patient feels at ease and you want to gain their trust No one likes to be looked down on or even looking up to, right? Also, it will make you and your patient feel very comfortable. Maybe they'll tell you things that they have never told anyone else, any other provider, and it'll help you reach the diagnosis quicker. When patients feel nervous, they forget to give you the vital information that you need to help them properly. So this is very important. Number three, sit down next to the patient. This strategy will help you remove whatever barrier, whether it's physical, emotional, or even mental barriers that may stand between you and your patient. Also, it enhances the patient's perception that you're giving them the attention that they need and that your focus is on them. Number four, listen. It is so vital to be a great listener, and I cannot overemphasize this. Practice, practice, practice listening. (laughs) Listening can help you disarm walls, but the opposite is true too. When you seem rushed, you will be building walls and miss key clues from your HPI. So make sure that you can master the art of listening. And trust me, I practice this on a daily basis. And I feel that I keep getting better every time because I don't think we'll ever be 100% great listeners. So take it from me. All right. If you apply all of these strategies, you will likely enhance your patient provider report. And this takes time. It doesn't come right away, but the more you do it, the better you get at it. It would also help you to put you and your patient on equal footing. And I think that's what really matters in healthcare. At the start of the video, I mentioned that I would show you how to get access to the free ortho guide for nurse practitioners to help you maximize your skills and time in clinical practice. There's a link in the description box below where you can go and grab your copy for free today. It will be an absolute game changer, especially if you're not familiar with musculoskeletal care. That is it for now. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.